Welcome to Guns, Guns, Gear, and Guns with Gary Gunderson. I am Gary Gunderson. The Fifth Circuit ruled that the ATF's pistol brace rule will likely be defeated and kept the current injunction in place. This is good news for firearms rights because though the current injunctions are limited, they effectively prevent the ATF from enforcing their silly little rule. The majority opinion eviscerated the ATF and did not hold back, even saying that it is nigh impossible for a regular citizen to determine what constitutes a braced pistol under the ATF's final rule. It also highlighted the stats behind the comments of the initially proposed rule that though there were a lot of form letters for and against, the comments against the rule were more numerous and more unique overall. That goes to show that while a form letter is better than nothing, or maybe a good starting point, when the next ATF power grab comes and opens for a comment, you should try to make the comment your own and provide your own points and reasoning because it is something that was considered in this case. It criticized the difference between the proposed rule and the final rule, highlighting how braces that were going to be legal as braces and unregulated in the proposed rule were suddenly NFA items in the final rule. They rightly point out that the ATF did not provide any pistols with a brace that would not be subject to the NFA regulations in the final rule, making it impossible for anyone to determine what could possibly be legal without it being an SBR. And that, according to the final rule, millions of Americans have been committing felonies for years and still are given the rate of registration from the grace period. They determined the final rule has no relation to the proposed rule as there is no logical outgrowth when beforehand there was an objective worksheet which was completely thrown out in favor of turning like 99% of all braced pistols into SBRs. The ruling also calls the ATF statement a bald assertion that the rule provides clear guidance on what constitutes a brace subject to NFA, which is hilarious and true. The ATF was completely lying about the rule because it is not clear at all. Part of the lawsuit was to try and address the constitutional questions about the ATF's authority and their rulemaking, but though a win is a win, it's not a total win. Because with the court ruling that since they are likely to win the case on other merits and are remanding it back to a lower court, there is no need to look into the constitutionality question. They did say that given the circumstances, a nationwide injunction should be considered while remanding the case. The concurring opinion also chastised the ATF because a brace makes pistols less concealable and more accurate, which is actually safer for shooters. There was one poopy diaper dissenter, which goes to show how important these judicial appointments are. Even if it's nonsense, it could be legally binding nonsense. The dissent even says that unless the Supreme Court says so, uniquely dangerous weapons, including short barreled rifles, are not covered by the Second Amendment, and he uses the point from Heller identifying them as not typically possessed by law-abiding citizens for lawful purposes, but if the ATF did have its way here and everyone registered braced pistols as SBRs, suddenly adding 40 million or so SBRs to the registry would not make them typically possessed by lawful people doing lawful things, then by what factor is typical when there are millions of them. Yeesh. But that's all for today. Do you think this will get a nationwide injunction? And do you think it will be defeated in court soon or carry on for many more years? Let me know in the comments below. Please consider supporting me on Patreon, like the video, share it with others, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.